Hi everyone, I'm making this video to show you how to solve a common problem when you have a Windows on your laptop and when you see the starting Windows message it goes boom. What you've seen now was blue screen of that. Beside the fact that there might be plenty of different reasons why this have happened, I won't be trying to explain it, I'll just show you how to resolve it. So to sort this out if you have some data on your laptop that you would like to recover, you could download a Herence Boot CD from the from the internet. I've got a really old version of Herence Boot CD, which is containing Windows XP, but newer versions are containing uh, some newer versions of Windows. But basically, this the idea about about them, oh yeah, we have we seen the second blue screen. So the idea behind them is the same. So what I did right now, I'm just uh, I've just put my CD into the CD drive, and now laptop boots from it. If it wouldn't boot from it, you would have to press F10 key and change the boot order, or F2 key and change the boot order, so it will boot from your CD. And now, from the Herence Boot CD menu, we have a couple of options. One of them is to boot a mini Windows XP. In newer versions, there will be like a mini Windows or something. So this now is loading a mini version of Windows XP. And so once that will boot up, we'll have an access to all the files on our hard drive. Right, so right now that's mini version of Windows XP boot over. It might not be looking in the most exciting way, but it's very useful. So what you can do now, you can uh, go to my computer and over here you can see your hard drive containing Windows. So you can open it and see what the files are on it. And if you have some personal files, for example somewhere inside users folder or wherever else, you can go and recover them and just Look, the USB hard drive or some uh, flash drive or anything else and just recover those files onto that flash drive. And once you are done with this, we can start reinstalling the Windows on this laptop. So while just closing the mini version of Windows XP, while shutting it down. And now what I have over here is a copy of my original HP Windows 7 installation CD. So I'll just take the Herence Boot CD out because we don't need it anymore. All the files are recovered and we'll put the Windows 7 in. Oh, I just started loading the Windows pack again. Right, so we have the Windows 7 installation DVD inside the drive. So let's start from it. Press any key and this will start loading the Windows 7 installation. This will now load the Windows setup files, which will start the process of installing the fresh copy of Windows on the hard drive. So now Windows logo will appear. And here we have a setup screen. So now we have to choose what's the language that you want to install your Windows with and we're clicking the install now button. As we've recovered all the files from this laptop earlier on, we can start with installing the fresh Windows installation. So let's click on next, let's accept the license terms and now we're clicking on custom advanced and over here you can see the partitions on the hard drive we want to completely wipe them out and install windows from the scratch but before we we'll do this please bear in mind that after this step you won't be able to recover anything from your hard drive anymore so please make sure that by this time when we're doing this you've recovered all the files that you needed so now let's go back to what we're doing and let's click on delete so that will delete the windows from the hard drive That was there and all the files and everything else all of that goes so now we are clicking on new and apply now windows will create a partition for the system and all the other partitions that it needs to function and we are clicking next 
and this starts the installation process. So you copy all the files from the HP system installation DVD to your hard drive inside this laptop. I'm doing that on a HP G60 laptop. So that's my HP G60 here. And this now is copying the files. So now Windows have finished copying the files. So it will just install some more features and updates. And then we'll come to the point where it will just complete the installation. So now the system will restart. And it will continue with Windows system installation. At the moment, we're not clicking any key because the Windows is already on the hard drive. Oh, by the way, that's a Windows 7 I'm installing over here. 64-bit version of Windows 7. And now we have back the installation screen. It takes a while at this point, but you can see that hard drive is blinking. So that means files are copying and the Windows is installing. As well as on this HP G60, you have to manually switch on the Wi-Fi. We might just as well do it. Oh, it don't want to. Oh yeah, here we go. So Windows will know that there is a Wi-Fi in this laptop and might install the driver for it automatically, but we'll see. Now there's another restart. And again, we are ignoring the press any key message because the system is already on the hard drive. It's just finalizing the steps that needs to get it installed. Now the setup is preparing computer for the first use. And here we go. That's our Windows 7 already installed on this laptop. So now we have to tell what's our username. Click on next. Password, if you like one. If not, just click on next. Now, there, there are settings for installing updates, so I will just go with recommended settings. And here we have date and time settings, so I'll just set it to the time that's right now, because it's not really correct, good. Everything else looks, looks alright. And now Windows is finalizing the settings. And after this point, there is a welcome screen from Windows. I'll click on the Wi-Fi once more. The Windows restart is itself just so. Uh, I'll try the Wi-Fi setting once more. Nope, the Wi-Fi have to get the driver installed. So okay, that's the first start of the Windows. It's setting the personalized settings and things. So it's basically configuring our desktop. Oh, Wi-Fi works now. So at this point, we have a Windows installed. There is a Wi-Fi connection. So what you have to do now is to connect to your Wi-Fi network. Type the key over. And after clicking OK, it's connecting to your Wi-Fi network. Now, if that's your home network, just click on home network. So it will access the settings like you will be in home. Now let's click on cancel and that's your Wi-Fi connection setup. So we have a Internet Explorer here, so let's have a use of it. And what's Internet Explorer good for? It's good for accessing the internet. So let's go to Google and let's download the Chrome browser. We're downloading Chrome. Let's click on run. And this will now install a proper browser on our laptop. So here is Google Chrome that's getting installed. Here we go. And now we have a Google Chrome installed. Once there's a Google Chrome, so let's go to Google and we are typing the model of our laptop and this will show the driver's download page so here we go that's all the drivers for our laptop and we can now start downloading them so we're clicking on a driver 
and download. I'll just download that manually without installing any software assistance or crap like that. So now you can see that my graphics driver is already downloading. So let's go back to reviews page and get all the other drivers. So I want audio driver as well. This HPR system is more than annoying. So that's our audio driver. And what you want probably as well is the touchpad driver. And a quick launch button driver. So now we are going to computer downloads and once downloaded all those drivers will appear will appear over here. So we are just installing them one by one. So we have audio driver installed. Now we are installing another driver. So that's the touchpad driver. Let's install a touchpad driver. So we've got the touchpad driver installed, let's install it later. And now another driver which is HP quick launch buttons driver. Let's click on next and let's install that. In terms of all the other drivers, if you'll be missing something, you can install them at any time by just going to HP website as I've shown and uh, downloading everything else. I've just, I'm just showing over here how to install the bare basics, which is the uh, graphics driver, quick launch bu buttons and uh, touchpad driver, because essentially that's, that's all you need. Maybe you will need a, a driver for a, for a SD card as well. Yeah, updates, let's postpone that, because we'll be restarting the laptop anyway. Okay, that's my quick launch buttons. So let's continue with the last one, which is a graphics card driver. So now I'll just install the graphics card driver. for my NVIDIA graphics card over here. And let's click on next and next. That's installing all the all the dis display driver components. The installation is now complete and we can restart our laptop now. So let's click on finish. So that's the now restarting. Yeah, at this moment we don't need the Windows installation CD anymore, so we can take it out. Oh, Windows actually have installed the update as well. And here we go. As you can see already, is that 
windows have loaded with graphics driver installed so you can notice that resolution is back to normal if you go to google it won't be like massive on the screen and you'll see that your laptop works as it always worked normally so you've got all the necessary drivers installed at this point let's switch on the wi-fi here we go so there is sound driver installed a touchpad driver is installed there is a wi-fi driver that have installed automatically and we've installed the graphics driver so laptop is fully functional at this point you can uh, use it as you've always used it normally if you've backed up your files uh, right now is the time to plug in your hard drive or a pen drive and put them back on your laptop so here is my is my HP G60 with Windows operating back as normal. Thank you for watching my video and please like it if you've enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel for more videos and tech tips. Thank you, have a nice day, bye!